Welcome back. Let's take a look at the HTML5 start file that we are going to be using for our template work today. I've got a version here on my desktop and you can download one from the companion website as well. Here we have a basic HTML5 doc type that should not be a surprise language header character set. Okay, And then there's a title. Here we have the do not lie statement for phones which you're familiar with. And then I usually load the latest version of jQuery because I sometimes need it in my projects. Now this particular project we're working on today is not going to be using jQuery so we can actually get rid of it. And then I load my style sheets. Now the order in which you load these is important as we discussed before. You start with the reset which puts all of the um, browser styling it erases it so everybody starts at the same level and then second thing we load is our phone default which applies to every device that's going to view our site and then we load the tablet which is going to pick up in our case the tablet picks up at 600 pixels and then we're going to finally load the desktop and the desktop picks up in our case at 1141 pixels. Then we've got this crutch code for Internet Explorer that helps the old versions work with HTML5 and CSS3. And then we're ready for the body of our document. Now I've got a wrapper which contains everything inside the body tag. And we'll be using that Actually, we don't need that today, but we'll just go ahead and leave it in there. And then there's a container. The container holds all of the content, and it limits the width of the header, the content, and the footer to, in our case, 1141 pixels. So if the browser goes beyond that container, then you see the wrapper or the body tag, whatever's in that. Then we've got the new HTML5 header tag. Inside that, there's an H group with two headers, a site name and a tagline. We'll fill those in. Then we've got our navigation, which is also an HTML5 tag. It contains an unordered list with three sample links. We'll be increasing that to four. And then we've got the next section, which is the content. So inside the container, there's basically one, two, three, four pieces or four sections. The content is where we have the page name and then we're going to have lots and lots of stuff in here. The majority of the stuff will go inside the content ID or the, div the division that has an ID of content. And then of course there's a footer and then we close the container and we close the wrapper. Now, nothing really sh earth shattering there. Let's go to our reset. Once again, this is from Eric Meyer's website. Here's our phone. This should look familiar. This is the WebKit text size so that when you rotate your smartphone from portrait to landscape, it doesn't automatically enlarge. Then we've got this box sizing, which makes all boxes, and I use that term loosely, it's anything that's a tag basically, it makes it react the same. So when you give it a width, margin is always outside that width and padding is always inside that width. We'll be using this today as part of our um, project. Body font, by default, the body font is size 16. So this statement really doesn't do anything except remind you and I that the base font is 16. Then we have the container. The container has a minimum width of 320 and a maximum width of 1140. This number matches this number where the desktop kicks in is also the point at which the container will no longer stretch. It stops stretching and of course it has a background color of white. We have some placeholders but there's no rules for the header. The navigation, we, we display our anchors as blocks, give them a background color of gray and a hover color of gray content as a minimum height. The reason I do this is so while I'm developing the site 
um, if there's if there's just a couple of lines of code in there, it pushes the footer down a little ways so that it isn't scrunched up. And then the footer has got three basic statements. This one says keep yourself below the content. So in case I float something, the footer doesn't go up and get messed up. Put the text in the center and then put a little bit of padding around it. Now if we preview that in our browser, it is darn ugly. But there's our 320. Here's all the way to the desktop version. Notice it stops getting wider at 1140. Here's that hover color with our three links. Page content, centered footer, site name with tag name. So that's kind of an overview of what we've got so far. The tablet has no rules. And the desktop at this point, all it does is add a line around the container and push it down from the top a little bit. That's all those two do. So let's begin by working on our header, and we'll do that in the next video.